What's happening, Tabletop Gamers? My name is Ludomay, and welcome back to Ludomay Unboxes. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Jungle Joust by Adrian Animescu and Daryl Andrews, and published by IDW Games. Let's go ahead and have a look at the back here, and see what this game is about. In the far tropical reaches of the kingdom, a new twist in a classic competition has emerged. Brave warriors compete in jousting competitions while riding mighty rhinos making even the strongest warhorse seem weak in comparison. With clever card play, do your best to influence the riders as you wager on different aspects of their performance. Try to pick the winners and walk away rich before your rider and wealth clatters away in the dust. Jousting with rhinos. Interesting theme. Not sure how that would work, but I am curious. So with all that said, let's have a look and see what does Jungle Joust have to offer us. <laughs> Starting things off, we have a pretty good illustrated board. We have symbols down here that are really easy to see, which is very nice. The track is easily to tell, and a little spot right here for you to put the fence, which for some reason they decided to actually make like a little cardboard chitsy that you'll actually assemble and put on the board. Now thankfully the assembly is actually really easy. There are just these little slits here that you'll just slide the two halves of the fences into as well as a little connector for them and then just little pieces down here that you'll also slide in on the bottom so that it can stand up. What does it do in the game? I don't know. Also, great choice of adding a stripe to each side to know which side belongs to which rider. Speaking of riders, here they are. There are two little uh, cardboard chitsy platforms just like the fence. And you will have to assemble these to play the game. But thankfully, in order to store it, you really, I think, will only just have to remove the lance. And then you can just fit them in the box like that. Other than that, though, these are very nice little standees. The parts go in very easily. Similar with the fence, it's just a little slit that you have to put them in. And then you can just sit them on the platform. We have a whole bunch of tokens here. Each of these has one of five traits for each of the two knights as well as the color for them as well as a number here that will show the value of what you'll be betting on that trait for that color. And it will say very nice graphic design. You can easily tell what each of the different traits are and I like the little stroke that you added to each one that really helps them stand out from the background. Since this is a betting game, you're going to need coins. And the game comes with four different types, 20, 10, 5, and 1. And they are all of different sizes, so that if you have a hard time telling which one apart, you can just rely on the various sizes to tell. We have a bunch of debt tokens that admittedly look very nice, but you do not want these. They will take money away from you at the end. There are six crests included, three for each color. The front shows you who you are allied with. The back is, uh, is supposed to act like an aid for making bets. We have a deck of joust cards. Each of these cards has some symbols down here. These will allow you to affect the performances of each of the riders. And lastly, there are these crowns, which you'll use to mark the varying aspects on the cards. So that's everything you get if you obtain Jungle Joust. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to learn how to play Jungle Joust, or if you want to know my thoughts on it, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, reviews, and unboxings. Thank you all as always so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. A game that I reviewed over two years ago called Forbidden Island. If you saw my review for Forbidden Island, then you know that I do enjoy that game, and I am happy that I got to play Forbidden Desert. However, just like any other form of media, whenever they make a sequel to something, more often than not, it tends to be inferior 